Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. And this morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Informa, that's the uh, Routledge organisation, part of Taylor and Francis. This book's particularly important because of what's happening at the moment within arbitration, no, both nationally and internationally. The book is called Singapore Arbitration Legislation, which is annotated. It's now in a second edition. It's been written by our old friend Robert Merkin and Johanna uh, Yalmarsson. I do apologise if I have not pronounced the names correctly. As I say, the book comes from Informa. Now, Elizabeth and I have written a review, which will be on the web and in the journals. We've given it the title uh, of our review, An Essential Work of Reference for Arbitration Legislation in Singapore, now in a new second edition. Now, you probably wonder, if you don't know already, why Singapore? Well, we'll come on to that in a minute. Let me show you the book first of all. There's the front, the side. It's the Lloyd's Arbitration Law Library series, which you can see there from the spine. So the basic information there. Now, the book is a hardback, nice purple cover. At the back, you've got a standard uh, index, 320 odd pages in total. You can see it's a detailed, actually quite a detailed index, which you can see. Now, the book itself is structured in a normal way. Uh, lots of footnotes. You can see a huge amount of footnote information there. Um, you do have uh, subheads as well, which you can see looking specifically at the arbitration, in that case, the Arbitration Act. If you go to the front of the book, you can then see there's the Law Library itself, the Lloyd's Law Library arbitration section. That's the front page there. And then there's a very useful preface from uh, Rob Merkin and uh, Johanna. And the book is also available as an e-book. And there are the contents uh, there in some detail. You can see a lot of information covered there. It's split into various chapters, of course, all the way through. And then again, you can see how it's, uh, how it's actually structured. Then you've got after that a table of cases, which are quite substantial. And then after the table of cases, you, you then go straight on to uh, the actual chapters themselves. It starts with a background to the Singapore legislation and it says Singapore has two parallel arbitral systems, one for domestic and the other for international and we'll get on to that. You can see just opening the book there's a huge amount of information and it's very much of a, a book which applies to the what I describe as the global legal community. Now, what we say about the book is this, that the role and influence of Singapore in both arbitration and international arbitration has grown significantly over recent decades. Arbitrators, as well as international lawyers, therefore, do well, in our view, to acquire this book, which has been published recently by Informa, which is part of Routledge. Now, of course, this book's in a second edition. Certainly as a, as a dispute resolution jurisdiction, Singapore has acquired what is widely regarded as a worthy and formidable reputation for the efficient conduct of this type of legal service. And in the view of many, it is second only to London as an arbitration destination, as you will see from reading the book. And in fact, if you look at quite regularly in the newspapers, you will see the, the concept of London being a, a major legal centre, if not the best, is always something that's being commented upon. So therefore it is something that is, is directly relevant because Singapore effectively is our main competitor, if I can put it in those terms. The legislation here, of course, is fully annotated, making it easier to access cases decided under a particular provision. And as the two co-authors uh, point out, uh, that's Merkin and Halge Marson, uh, Singapore has two parallel arbitral systems, as I've indicated. One is for the domestic arbitration, the other is for international arbitrations, which are enshrined in the IAA, which is the International Arbitration Act 1994, which is set out in detail in Chapter 2. Also, Singapore has, since 1986, been a signatory to the New York Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of foreign arbitration awards from 1958. And it's also stressed that Singapore's legal system is fully equipped to allow it to take its place as a leading forum for hosting international arbitrations. That, I think, is the key point 
because it is recognised that Singapore has a, a very substantial uh, sound reputation and that means that London therefore must take notice of that. Since the first edition was published in 2009 and the law of arbitration in Singapore has undergone a number of changes which of course are incorporated in the new edition. For example, important amendments have been made to the International Arbitration Act and the Arbitration Act itself. The courts therefore have handed down approximately a hundred decisions on arbitration matters and there's a new set of SEAC rules, that's the Singapore International Arbitration Centre, SEAC. There are 37 of these which are listed in Chapter 6. New material in this edition also includes <coughs> the State Immunity Act and the Contracts Rights of Third Parties Act and it's also mentioned that Singapore is a signatory to the UN Citral Model Law, but also has adopted what is referred to as its own distinctive approach to a number of issues, virtually all of which emerge in this book, including <coughs> a number of inter inter interesting comparisons between arbitration in London and arbitration in Singapore. As I've indicated, it's extensively and copiously um, footnoted with a detailed index and a table of contents and a lengthy and quite substantial table of cases. And it's an annotated work which I think will be a great help, which is uh, of course of reference and it should be considered, I think, essential reading to anybody who's involved in dispute resolution, especially internationally, including lawyers as well as arbitrators. And the law is stated as, as up to um, August 2015. So you can see that the um, the book is very current at the moment, and I think it's an invaluable uh, source for what is happening generally uh, with the way in which globally um, law and decisions are arrived at. There's the book again, and then there's the uh, spine. Just opening it up in the middle, you can see again a lot of detail, a lot of footnotes to justify assertions made, and the case law. That's where a lot of the case law is found. Then you've got, for instance, just looking, um, this is the International Arbitration Act itself we're looking at here, and Article 13 Challenge Procedures. Again, you can see there's a lot of detail. A lot of good advice, I think, comes, um, comes from this book. Just reminding you again, that's what the index is at the back. And it's actually a detailed index, which I think is very helpful. And if you go to the front, again, as I've indicated, the table of cases is a very ex extensive table. You can see just um, running through, it's about that thickness, so it's quite a large amount. And as I've indicated, the <coughs> excuse me, the um, the actual content section is very uh, detailed as well. Well, thank you very much to Rob Merkin and uh, Johanna Hodgmarson, very much indeed, and all to Informer, uh, the people at Informer, for producing this work. Uh, these Lloyd's um, Library uh, books law library books are really very very important because that is where the law is we can't do our work without these books and i'd like to thank the publishers and the people concerned very much for making our tasks just a little bit easier thank you bye bye